President Biden delivering his second State of the Union address last night. So what did you, the American people, think when you were watching at home? Here with the top takeaways, partner and president at Maslansky and Partners, Lee Carter. Good morning, Lee. Good morning. Good morning. Let's play the first clip when he talked about, he was talking about immigration and fentanyl, which obviously is a problem. Um, and watch these dials for you at home. It's red's Republican, blue's Democrat, and yellow are the independents. If their family has turned pain to purpose, working to end the stigma and change laws. He told us he wants to start a journey toward American recovery. Doug, we're with you. Fentanyl is killing more than 70,000 Americans a year. So let's launch a major surge to stop fentanyl production and the sale and trafficking with more drug detection machines, inspection cargo, stop pills and powder at the border. Well, Republicans were yelling, secure the border. They sure were. And you can see Republicans reacted by giving this a B. Democrats also gave it a B and independents a D. Now, here was what was interesting. This is a really rare moment where Republicans and Democrats come together yeah. and independents disagree. But what Republicans were saying is they wanted to hear him address fentanyl. They were glad to hear that he was going there. Now, they didn't necessarily like the Republican crosstalk. We heard that from both sides. And you can see that uh, the, the, the Democrats didn't like that either. But the independents were really turned off by the whole exchange. And that's one of the themes we saw for the night. The way that the Republicans behaved really did turn off a lot of independent voters. Really? It really? sure did. And it's interesting that uh, Republicans even told you they didn't like the cross exchange, but a lot of people I've talked to liked it, the ones who were Republicans, because they liked the fact that they had a chance to rebuke what he was saying. They didn't, they said he wasn't telling the truth. You can see that there were a fair number of people who did. They, they responded that you saw the bump in the dials that they gave a B. But when I looked at the verbatims, what people were saying over and over again was there should be some amount of decorum. You can fight back, you can slap back. There's a lot of other times and places to do it. There's other ways to do it. They just didn't like the sort of Coliseum feel right. that was Don't happening last night. It's the president's time. Okay. That's right. All right, here he was talking about inflation. Inflation. Inflation has been a global problem because the pandemic disrupted our supply chains and Putin's unfair and brutal war in Ukraine disrupted ener energy supplies as well as food supplies, blocking all that grain in Ukraine. But we're better positioned than any country on earth right now. Here at home, gas prices are down $1.50 from their peak. Food inflation is coming down, not fast enough, but coming down. Inflation has fallen every month for the last six months. Our take home pay has gone up. See? You can see Democrats gave that a B minus, Independents a D, and Republicans an F. What we did hear from voters was, you would be surprised, you would think that Democrats might have even given this a higher grade, but in some ways, one of the voters that we heard from said, this is somewhat divorced from my reality. This is not the, this is not the place that I am living in. And so part of the problem with the speech last night wasn't that it was a good speech, it was the credibility of that speech. A lot of people are questioning whether or not things were true, and I think you're going to be waiting to hear uh, how things go from here, if he's going to deliver on any of these promises or anything that he said. And I think there's going to be a lot of people who are fact-checking. Yeah, because American people, the American people know how much we're paying at the grocery store. They know That's you're right. paying more at the pump now than you were when he took office. So right. I understand that. All right, here is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She was the Republican. She's now the governor of Arkansas, and she gave the Republican rebuttal. Listen. Beyond our border from Afghanistan to Ukraine, from North Korea to Iran, President Biden's weakness puts our nation and the world at risk. And the president's refusal to stand up to China, our most formidable adversary, is dangerous and unacceptable. President Biden is unwilling to defend our border, defend our skies, and defend our people. He is simply unfit to serve as commander in chief. When I was watching, I thought, I know what she's doing. Defend our border. Okay, we know that. Our skies. She's talking about China. No doubt about it. And you can see that Republicans and independents loved everything she had to say. They gave it an A. Well, Democrats, not surprisingly, gave it an F. This is sort of what you would expect, the big divide. But I'm always fascinated to see how those independents go, and they very much were in line with Republicans. This job that she did last night is a really tough one. We often say this is the hill a lot of, uh, a lot of people go on to die, right? Because you, you're there to attack. It's often not received very well, but it does a job. She was able to do that attack, deposition Biden and some others, and still come out looking really good to her base. So I think she did an amazing job, and the Republicans and independents agreed. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you. 
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.